servant depart in peace for my eyes have seen thy salvation which I have prepared in the sight of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for and for glory to your people in Israel Amen Boy, just watching the latest news on the BBC at Porto Prius. Mm, in Haiti. Baby, youngster, 16 months or something. Three days, nothing, and the, the, this little thing just walked out, said hi, hi then, poured water, probably saved this little life. Hmm. Parents then, yeah. Mm. Keep thinking. I've seen stuff too in the world, particularly in the townships in South Africa, but India too. And it is just ongoing. This is a great big headline news, of course. But really, one could just go around the world. and find this daily grind of two-thirds of the world's population. We're not hearing at all about the, the, the drought in Eastern Africa. I mean, we could just go around the world. Now, part of my dilemma has been this. I'm in the first world. I'm not a politician. Absolutely not. I'm far, far, far too honest. I look people in the eye and I say exactly what I believe is the case. And they don't like it. Okay? And that's the end of it. So I'm no politician. I'm a Christian. I'm not out in the third world. Those two countries in particular, South Africa and or India, doing something on the ground. That seemingly has been God's will for me. This is when I blether on about holy obedience. I'm just sitting here in my material, relative material comfort. <coughs> Certainly, you know, blinding luxury compared to what so much of the world has. Particularly with fresh steam running water out of any tap I can find. That's the one I focus on. The banking crisis now, you see, means that so much of the third world, two thirds of the world's population, are in dire straits because. So, on the one hand, we have the monstrous greed of a section of the West. And the entrenched endemic suffering of so much of the world's population. And it's a wrong. And the bankers should be brought to book. Okay. So I think. 